Trying to operate ships in a global pandemic seems to be getting more complicated every day. It appears the charters are discriminating against nationalities whose crews might have recently tested COVID-19 positive upon arriving in port. Are charters within their rights to discriminate? Is it morally fair? Are seafarers' human rights being compromised? The charters of ships being commercial operators are requiring only a few things. One is safe operation of ships and two that the ships must operate without any undue delay which will cause an adverse commercial impact. The ports and the countries in which these ports are located are the ones which are red flagging certain crew nationalities and the charterers are only reacting to that issue. Thus, it's not the charterers who are actually discriminating against any particular crew nationality, but they too are sort of sort of victims of the requirements of the ports, who are the ones which are uh, which are causing the causing the concern. And I think it is the countries have to be very pragmatic in their approach as to how they treat the crew during these COVID times and not uh, cause the charterers to start uh, making selection of crew nationalities. It's not their, within their purview. And, and I think the countries need to be more pragmatic and more practical in their approach. Can charterers discriminate the use of seamen from different races, countries, nationalities, uh, whatever, on moral or commercial grounds is a question that is being raised recently. In all fairness, a charter party contract between two people can specify what they agree as long as it's not unlawful and illegal. Moral question does not arise there. Even though there is a lot to be set right in this world, the commercial contract is a commercial contract. But unfortunately, there are trade restrictions embargoes that come up once in a while so when you hire a ship for a long term you may be prepared for that by saying so and so crew could not be eligible for that trade uh, and conditionalities like that or even for short voyages or specific trips you may have to replace crew the aimpa webinar entitled Reconceptualization of Indian Maritime Pilotage, held on the 24th of this month, attracted a huge global following. AIMPA President Captain Gajanan Karanjikar spoke on the success of the online event. AIMPA feels proud that yesterday's seminar about the reconceptualization of Indian Maritime Pilotage went very well. It was well received by the maritime industry and fraternity well attended by over 400 people on Zoom, YouTube and Facebook. The most overwhelming was the support given to AMPA by everyone for its first ever webinar on Indian maritime pilotage. We have taken three topics for discussion and deliberation, pilot ladder safety, pilot transfer procedures and also pilot training for safety of navigation in port. All the speakers from Australia, UK and India, they spoke very well and spoke their mind out. The, the inclusion of Sailing Master to speak about his plight of dealing with the pilots was very well received by the industry. The speakers in two sessions spoke of the points that they had implemented in their countries with respect to pilot services. AMPA has plans to take this forward in action points, in follow-up, and take this to the National Shipping Board, Indian Port Association, and Ministry of Shipping for furtherance of action. There are a lot of take-homes and takeaways from such seminars, and we would like to follow it up. AMPA also feels that the takeaways from this webinar should be taken to the ports to the pilots in the port, to traffic managers and all those people who are involved in pilotage services, whether it's minor port, major port or private port. 
Ampoa feels that there should be a pilot ladder campaign in all the ports post this webinar and make sure that the pilot ladders are safe and included in the port hazard safety campaigns. Ampoa also feels that the takeaways from this webinar are implemented and well supported by the IPA, NSB and MOS for further implementation. I as President of Rampam thank everyone for the involvement and caring about maritime pilotage and maritime pilots. We need to cover a lot of ground on these areas and I solicit everyone's support. The recent surge in demand for Indian ratings is an opportunity that is going a begging on account of insufficient timely support from the Directorate General of Shipping, say industry leaders. Well, in the month of October and despite the COVID pressure, I have a point to say. DG Shipping's job is to facilitate the seafarer's employment and right now we are running short of ABs with COP 2x5 or 3 by 5 that is ABs and uh, oilers and the opportunities are being lost and we have now started looking at uh, Ukraine as well as Romania to fulfill our requirements. Firstly it is so difficult to get jobs in Merchant Navy. Now that you know we are having some kind of a high water for Indian ratings it is time for DG shipping to at least put in some time energy effort and get at least the bridge course going where instead of 18 months after doing uh, watch keeping 2x4 or uh, 12 months after doing watch keeping 3x4 then you need to go on to the next one to get your uh, 2x5 and 3x5 I think the time can be reduced to 12 months and 6 months respectively provided there is a bridge program I don't understand why from February till October the bridge program cannot be made by DG shipping it's been 10 months I request the whole industry to speak up in one voice otherwise the opportunities will we'll keep losing the opportunities you know and as it is for the Indian ratings after a long time we are seeing the high water hello and welcome to the 37th edition of Marix Maritime News these are the headlines on Monday 26th October 2020 Indian shipping companies to get right of first refusal for ship chartering Nandesh was being rejected by Mauritius judge. Dearth of new orders underpins recovery and tanker shipping. Scarce tonnage pushes up demolition rates. In pursuance of the Make in India policy of the Government of India, the Ministry of Shipping has reviewed the ROFR, right of first refusal, licensing conditions for the chartering of vessels or ships through tender process for all types of requirements. To promote the demand of ships built in India, priority in charging of vessels has been assigned to vessels built in India, flagged in India and owned by Indians under the amendments in the guidelines to the right of first refusal. The latest ROFR policy of the government to give preference to Indian built, Indian owned and Indian flagged ships is a step in the right direction to support Indian shipbuilding industry under the Make in India scheme. This is a very positive policy decision indicating the focus of the government on Indian shipping. Atmanirbhar shipping for an Atmanirbhar Bharat. ROFR is applicable in case of PSU cargoes which have a sustainable share in India's exim as well as coastal trade. The new policy will incentivize ship owners to place new building orders with Indian shipyards. Historically, shipbuilding industry has shifted from developed countries to developing countries, from Europe to Japan to South Korea and then to China. I most sincerely believe India has the potential to be the next destination for the world shipbuilding industry on a really large scale. Shipping and shipbuilding industry in India both have the capability to rise to greater heights and such policy initiatives will strengthen the wings of the industry. SCI has always had Indian built ships in the fleet and we wholeheartedly accept this initiative which shall be a win-win for both Indian ship owners and shipbuilders. On their part, however, Indian shipbuilding industry has to adopt 
state of the art shipbuilding practices with focus on quality and cost competitiveness the indian national ship owners association welcome the new policy of rofr which has been recently announced by the ministry of shipping this is a policy that was long awaited uh, this policy brings great amount of benefits to india as a nation firstly it straight away makes it or incentivizes building of ships in india because ships which are going to be built in india will get the right of first refusal over all other ships simultaneously it protects the existing tonnage something that insa has been talking about and it has grandfathered the uh, existing tonnage which is now going to be treated as if this tonnage is also built in india more importantly what this will do is that when people start building in india this will also mean that it necessitates flagging in india which means that the indian flag will grow and this is one of the primary objectives of insa is to make indian shipping healthier stronger and larger also uh, use of indian ships would mean that you will use indian seafarers for operating those ships so greater amount of employment opportunities for our indian seafarers uh, the increase in the number of ships will also lead to an ensuring that less foreign ships are used which means that the freight which was hither to going out of india and was going out to the foreigners will now stay in india therefore an economic benefit arising out of that freight we at insa would therefore call upon all mariners and others who are who are related to this trade to come in and now invest in shipping to build ships in india to flag ships in india and carry more and more cargo on the indian coast as well as internationally i must quickly add that this is applies to cargo not only local but also import and export and for this purpose we are extremely grateful to the honorable minister mr mansur bhai mandavia for having taken an extremely bold decision under the leadership of the prime minister of india ministry of shipping has issued a notification on 23rd october 2020 in line with our government's initiative of make in india to give a strategic boost to domestic shipbuilding industry to enhance income and employment government has taken several steps to promote shipbuilding in india especially by providing long term subsidy budgetary provision of rupees 150 crore has been earmarked by the ministry in 2021 for providing financial assistance to all indian shipyards except naval yards government intend to further incentivize shipbuilding by providing additional market access and business support to ships built in india shipbuilding in india can be promoted if priority is given for indian cargoes for vessel built in india view which right of first refusal priority has been redefined as category 1 indian built indian flagged and indian owned category 2 foreign built indian flagged and indian owned category 3 indian built foreign flag and foreign owned all vessels which are applying with indian flag as on date of issue of circular by director general of shipping shall be deemed to be indian built and will fall under category 1 the revision of rofr rule is a giant step towards atmanirbhar shipping it will promote make in india initiative through self reliance and contributing towards long term economic growth there are 24 shipyards and shipbuilding activities which are bound to get a boost this will give employment to number of laborers technicians engineers and other skilled personnel we welcome the strategy uh, strategic initiative by ministry of shipping Mauritius has rejected the application for bail made by Sunil Kumar Nandeshwar, captain of MV Vakasu, that sank off southeastern coast of the island nation in July. Given that the applicant may be charged with a serious offence, and if found guilty, a severe penalty may be imposed on him by the trial court. I am of the view that the risk to interfere with the witness and the risk of absconding are real and plausible. Acting Senior District Magistrate Nishal K. Jugnauth said in Port Louis, the capital, last Tuesday. I am here to continue to pursue matters, Captain Nandeshwar, 
who is detained in Mauritius. Bail application of Captain Nandeshwar has been rejected during the last court hearing. It appears that court is hesitant to grant him bail. The reason could be the court lack of faith in having continued cooperation from the captain. Therefore, there is a hesitation to permit him to stay at the hotel as they fear he could influence other witness and even abscond. We can say that it is difficult to convince the authority to grant him bail because of above reasons. The Maritime Union of India, however, continue to put in efforts in this matter. Indian Maritime University, a central university under Ministry of Shipping, Government of India, offering various UG and PG courses in the maritime sector, UG programs in Marine Engineering, Nautical Science and Naval Architecture, PG and research programs in Naval Architecture, Marine Engineering and Management. Campuses located in Chennai, Vishakapatnam, Kolkata, Mumbai and Kochi. For admissions and program details, please visit www.imu.edu.in. The lack of tanker new building orders, coupled with the reduced freight and asset values over the past couple of months, are the current developments that would lead to a more positive market in 2021 and beyond, according to a panel of industry players at the Saudi Maritime Congress webinar. The decline in the order book across the broad tanker shipping segment is mainly due to the uncertainties over the future oil demand, tanker earnings, and the requirements of the engine design in view of the IMO regulations. There is also a lack of financing, as many traditional shipping banks have reduced with their lending or withdrawn themselves altogether. First, we have the party. Now we have to face the hangover. Crude tanker rates are now well below both break-even levels from where they normally are at this time of the year. Rates for VLCCs were dollars hundred thousand per day last year. Current VLCC rates are less than a third of the average of 2015-19. How much of this latest storage is off the shores of China, where port congestion has been particularly acute in recent months? Global trade floating storage peaked at 190 million barrels on 1st July fallen to equivalent of 29.5 VLCCs or 131 million barrels a week ago. The negative signal for oil demand is that storage volumes have been hovering around the 130 million barrel level since late August. Non-Chinese storage has risen from 60 million barrels in late August to 80 million currently. Chinese floating storage accounted for half of the global floating storage in early September. Floating storage off the shores of destination nations is bad for tanker demand. Crude tanker utilization keeps falling. There are too many empty ships chasing too few cargoes and it's getting worse. Tanker rates can go from bust to boom overnight as a result of major geopolitical events. In the fourth quarter, we were at 92-93 million barrels of global oil consumption versus 101 million barrels a year ago. The problem is causing this is COVID, floating storage destocking, and OPEC holding back on production. I think there's a structural problem in the market. We are down 8 million barrels a day, and there's only one reason that I can think of. It's the missing airlines consumption for long haul traffic. I think the VLCCs will remain under pressure. The crew tanker order book is extremely low. Owners should scrap old tankers. Shipping banks from the West are hesitant to fund ship acquisition in this scenario. There's resistance to scrapping even when it would be the natural choice with rates so low. You're not going to reduce the order book and turn it into a good market. In the history of shipping, it hasn't worked that way. It's demand and it always has been started with demand. Ships recycling has taken a turn in favor of ship owners 
asks gas tonnage have forced yachts to compete for tonnage, leading to higher prices. In its latest weekly report, ship broker Clarkson Plateau Hillers said, A new week, but unfortunately, this did not relate to a fresh deluge of tonnage for buyers. Instead, it has meant that those vessels that have been circulated have received positive competition, resulting in each sail-raising eyebrow to the benefit of owners. Price levels continue to remain firm and bubble just below the 400 per LDT mark in India and Pakistan. As the economy attunes itself with the new normal, the ship recycling industry is also responding to the current recovery phase which has been faster than anticipated. Prices of HMS across the subcontinent have remained stable in the past two weeks but are now showing an upward trend. There is a healthy movement of goods within the local market. Presently, the yards have sufficient inventory in hand but recyclers are looking to book new tonnage as there is a boost in demand from the iron and steel industry. The export of steel from India has significantly increased post-COVID and this has led to positive competition among buyers for new tonnage. Founder member of the Company of Master Mariners of India, Captain N. N. Bhansali, passed away on the 21st of October at the ripe old age of 101. Captain Bhansali is the second centurion of the Indian Mercantile Marine to pass away within a span of a month, the other one being Captain Tommy Rosario. May the eternal soul attain everlasting peace. The Indian Navy currently operates one aircraft carrier, the 45,000-ton INS Vikramaditya, with the second, the 37,500-ton INS Vikrant, having just entered sea trials. Both are ski jump carriers, but the Indian Navy regards a third, flat-topped aircraft carrier, the planned 65,000-ton INS Vishal, with superior power projection capabilities as an absolute necessity. The Navy's plans for a three-carrier-based force structure has been accepted in principle. It would allow the Navy to operate two carrier task groups at all times with total fighter strength of more than 150 aircraft. However, India's new Chief of Defence Staff, General Bipin Rawat, who took office in January this year, has stated that budgetary constraints will force the Navy to defer plans for a third carrier. Some in the government see the third aircraft carrier as a frightfully expensive white elephant. They argue that India can ill afford such expenditure on one single platform when there are many other requirements crying for immediate attention. BWLPG announced recently the successful start of a week-long sea and gas trials for the very large gas carrier BW Gemini which has been retrofitted with pioneering LPG dual fuel propulsion technology. BW Gemini has achieved a historic milestone as the world's first VLGC to be fueled by liquefied petroleum gas, with the retrofitted main engine running on LPG and switching to traditional fuel seamlessly. The retrofitting process at Yulian Dockyard in Shenzhen, China took approximately 60 days and is estimated to have emitted 2060 tons of carbon dioxide. This is approximately 97% lower when compared to ordering a new building with similar technology. Navifong Consulting and Research of Vancouver have developed a new ferry, the Esperanza, that is sailing in the Patagonia region of Chile. The most eye-catching element of the design is a new bow shape that Naviform is calling the winged bow. According to the designers, the new geometry of the bow on the ocean-going vessel reduces the resistance of the hull, resulting in either higher speed or less power and less fuel consumption and GHG emissions. It also reduces motions and waves to 50% lower than conventional bow-fitted vessels. The design is also reported to eliminate slamming, making it possible to design a lighter structure. Finally, they say the new bow concept 
also increases the capacity of the hull or reduces its length and cost for a given capacity. Similarly, they have also developed a new geometry of the stern bulbs that spins the flow of water into the propellers counter to their rotation, further increasing efficiency. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you for watching. See you all next Monday.